Drowsy Maggie was the first tune I ever uh, arranged for Campanella Ukulele. It was when I was just starting well, with the ukulele. I just bought my first ukulele and uh, had discovered the, the Campanella technique um, from Tim Keo, Ukulele Tim, on YouTube. Um, and it was a revelation for me. I really enjoyed uh, that, uh, that style of playing. Um, and I wanted to have a go at uh, doing a, a tune that I was quite familiar with. I could already play it on the guitar, on the tin whistle, um, on the mandolin. So, uh, and it's a very, very popular uh, session tune, this one, Drowsy Maggie. Now, because it was the first one I ever did, I've made a few changes to it over the years. Um, there's the second part, I don't know, I was never really happy with uh, the way it worked. And there were little places where I was playing two notes on the same string. I always ask myself the question whether it's worth, you know, whether you really have to, you know, doggedly stick to Campanella voicing all the time. So I'm going to show you what I think now is uh, probably uh, my favourite way to play and the little changes that I made. Um, I transpose it down to uh, D Dorian, so it's a D minor chord. Uh, and a C major chord basically through most of the tune. You know, if you are a stickler for tradition and you want to play in the original key, well, then you just need to tune your ukulele up uh, uh, a whole step. Tabs are available to patrons, as always. And uh, if you want, uh, so if you want uh, on screen uh, tabs and uh, printable PDF, then you can sign up for Patreon. You're more than welcome. <laughs> um, otherwise, I'm just going to walk you through it right now. So kicking off with the note uh, D on the second fret of the third string, and we're going to be, uh, we're going to be uh, you know alternating between this note uh, quite a lot in the tune. So we're going to start with D A D up to C here. You hear that? Okay, you could you could play it uh, on the the first string with A and C. Um, but le letting all the strings ring uh, sounds nicer, so I can hear the, the, the D, the A, and the C all at the same time. And. Okay, into bar two, D again, A again, this time F, G, E, C, E, like that, okay, so from bar one, oops. So from bar one, do that again up to here. Bar one again repeats into bar three, and then we finish that four bar section. So we're going to go A G A again B on the 11th fret of the 3rd string and C on the 8th fret of the 2nd string. Now why do I do that? Because there are a million places where I can play B and C. I can play B and C here, I can play B and C here, like that. And I've, I've decided to uh, uh, to change it to play it uh, right up the neck. And the reason is, is I can get all the 4 strings to ring at the same time. And that's... Uh, really maximizing the potential of the, the campanella and the re-entrant tuning. So if I do, um, I, if I play it uh, on the fourth and the third strings, I've already stopped the notes uh, A and G from ringing. Slightly better uh, would be uh, seventh fret and fifth fret, but then I've got nowhere to go to play the G except fretting the G here. So the best way for me is that it's just to go 11 and 8, like that. Back to G. Open C, and it repeats. Now what you can do is, well, you've got these very long notes uh, here, and so what, what, what can we do to ornament it? 
Um, one possibility would be to slide up. The fiddlers do that a lot because they don't have frets. <laughs> that makes it easier. I don't know. Or you could play a kind of triplet um, here. And I do this kind of chicken picking with uh, with thumb down and second finger up. Like that. Um, it's actually two sixteenth notes. Two sixteenth notes and an eighth note. But you could say it's got a kind of triplet feel to it. Diddle dee. Yeah. Diddle dee. Dun, 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 dun. Now I did that all the way through on my first recording. I think that might be a little bit too much. I use it sparingly. Maybe you could start with a slide. And then bring in the, the triplet later on. Just mix it up and give it a little bit of variety. Okay, and that's the first part done, basically. There are, um, you know, it's an eight-bar section, basically, with um, with four bars that just repeat. Now, the second time round, then, we're going to finish with the note G. And moving into the B parts, then, so this is bar six. And what I've got, then, is um, starting with the note to, uh, C on the eighth fret of the second string. And I'm alternating with the open G to um, to the note E on the seventh fret of the first string, like that. And then I'm doing going to do the same with B on the eleventh fret of the third string and D on the tenth fret of the second string. Okay, can you see that? Right now, fiddlers and, uh, and banjo players and uh, tin whistle players, they don't do that. They just, um, the original tune should be. Like that, but I just, I've got this note G and it's in the right key, so. I think it sounds nice on the ukulele and it gives it more of a harpy feel to it. Okay. Okay, now the next bit is a little bit harder. And I have to make a bar because I want to play this note on the fourth string and this note on the um, on the first string. So I'm going to go C, D, E, up to F on the tenth fret of the fourth string and up to G on the tenth fret of the first string. Okay, like that. So bam, 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 bam. So that's C, D, E, F. G and with my third finger that's holding this note, uh, F here, I'm going to slide it down to play E and then E, F and D here on the seventh fret of my index finger, so that's all campanella. Okay, can you see that? And then repeat, and with our end bar, like in the end bars of the first uh, section, part of the A section, I'm going to go open A, open G, open A, and then B and C, back to G, repeat, and again, this run here, so, Okay, so then we finish with uh, with a descending uh, scale run, starting with G to G on the four, uh, on the first string, the tenth fret, to E on the fourth string on the oh what's that? And that's the ninth fret. Da up to F F on the first string again. This is the eighth fret to D on the 10th fret of the 2nd string, okay, so we're going to go G, E, F, G, 
and then dropping my bar on again with my second finger on the note C. So I'm going to go E to C and I'm, I'm holding the bar because I want to keep these notes and down to this note here D and drop my little finger on the note B on the 11th fret. I've got all those four notes ringing at the same time. And finish again with my nice uh, harpy. Down to open E and that'll take me back into the A part again. So. Okay, and as I'm coming down, and I drop the bar, drop the bar on. Okay, I've already got my fingers in place on the C and the B. Don't move them. Lift, lift up the bar, and they're ready to play. It gives me a nice campanella feel. Okay, so that's how to play Drowsy Maggie. I hope you're going to enjoy uh, doing that. Um, sorry if my explanations are not that clear uh, all the time, but um, just get the tabs if you want or follow along slowly. I'm sure you'll be able to figure it out. There are lots of different ways of playing this, and I've tried them all. Um, that's that's the one that I think is uh, is the best for now. Um, but you never know. If there's something that, uh, that you feel sounds a bit better, uh, go ahead and play it your way. There is no right or wrong way. It's up to you um, to make your own uh, interpretations. Um, and if you can find better ways to embellish it as well, put some ornamentation in, well, you know, go ahead and do that too. But it's a great tune. Everybody loves it. It's very, very well known. Okay, so thanks for watching. See you in the next lesson.